tonight. We thank you, God, for every church represented here. Oh, God, I pray that you put in our hearts tonight and start a fire for revival. Yes. Lord, I want to see hearts change and souls saved. Yes. God, I want to see our church uh, get back to where it should be, God. Yes. I'm on fire for you, moving and living in your text and your word. And God, help us tonight. Uh, to fall, fall into the hands of you, God, uh, that we might be able to do what you called us to do. Uh, God, the church has been lax too long. It's time to stand up and say, thus saith the Lord. Lord, tonight we pour our hearts out to you. We want to hear from you from heaven tonight. And Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. Bless your people tonight. Let us just worship you in spirit and truth. Hide us behind the cross, God, and use us in your service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening. How are y'all? All right. I'm going to start us off with a song. Um, anytime anybody mentions revival, the song comes to my mind. It's a song that I sang with my dad and my brother a long time ago. But you know what? Revival starts with you. It doesn't start with your pastor. It doesn't start inside the church. It starts directly in you at home. So let's get fired up and let's have a revival.
Robert, Robert. Yeah, we're gonna do my piano. really glad to be here with you tonight, and uh, my sister Teresa and myself got a couple of songs that uh, want to just worship with you. This first one, the Lord put on my heart uh, to uh, for her to sing, and I'll sing along with her. I want to speak the name of Jesus, and everything that we... Uh, <laughs> 
thing that we uh, had in, in uh, this life of being a child of God is in the name of Jesus. Amen. So this beautiful song, I want to speak the name of Jesus. You know it. You just worship right along with us.
praise. Father, we ask you tonight just to shine down upon us here in Priorsburg. Father, there's not a perfect one in this church tonight, and I certainly would leave the pack on those who have failed you many times. But Lord, you've just been good to me. You've just forgiven me, and you've strengthened me. And Father, I come here tonight with a bunch of my brothers and sisters, and we've been calling out for you to come and, in a mighty way and bring revival. We, we need revival in Pryorsburg. We need it in South Grades. We need it in Kentucky. We need it in the United States of America. But Father, you, or will you not revive us again? And I know you will, Father. So we pray tonight that we wouldn't wait on somebody else to reach out and touch you, Lord, but it would be me tonight. It would be the pastors, it would be the leaders, the Sunday school teachers that would reach out and take a hold of you tonight by faith. And Father, just say, do your work in our life. Have your way tonight. We don't want to leave here like we came in the name of Jesus. So we come to you and we just lift up our praise to you. You're wonderful. You are the treasure of our lives. And we pray tonight that somebody might meet the wonderful Jesus that we know. And if there's a, if there's a depressed, a distressed, a backslidden child of God here tonight, may they come home as you call them tonight. May they find their way back to the Father's house. In the name of Jesus. We'll just celebrate with them if they do tonight. We love you and we praise you tonight. And thank you. Oh, thank you, Father, for your, your great works of grace and kindness in our lives. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody give him a hand clap of praise. Big, big time purpose out of, out of my 
monitor in front of me. And I know Joe Biden has one. And, uh, but I don't have a monitor. But, uh, so I make myself nervous. Because uh, lots of times I, I'm, I'm getting old just like a lot of us. And I can't remember everything until I read. So I have to write it down so I know exactly what I want to say. And I don't want to say anything that turn me against God for sure. So uh, if you have your Bibles, like I said, and you want to follow along, let's go to Colossians 1, verse 11. We also pray that you would be strengthened with all His glorious power. So you have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He is enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to His people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He exists before, before anything else was created and is, is supreme over all creation. For th through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Yes. Yes. Got page now. <laughs> he existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God recounseled everything to him himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here tonight to, to give our lives to you. If we haven't already. Even if we have, we can rededicate our lives to you. Yes. Lord, we, we just need people to come before it's too late. Yes. So just lay, lay this on your on heart, Amen. Lord. Lay it on the heart to, to, to do it tonight. Don't wait. Don't wait another day. It may not be another day. And we know this already. That's the thing. We know it, but we just don't want to come. But make us come, Lord, tonight. We're here tonight for this revival. Like Mike said, we're here to praise you, Lord. To praise Jesus Christ. We owe Jesus Christ everything. Amen. Everything. We do not own nothing and would have nothing if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. And we are giving you thanks tonight for your son. Our holy Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes all is in his name. Amen. Amen. A Christian cannot please God unless God helps him. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were way back there in the back. Okay. Ruby, can you hear me? Where are <laughs> God gives Christians the power to live the right ways. God is powerful. For, for example, he made everything that is in the world and in the sky. Amen. Jesus died on the cross. But God's power made Jesus alive again. God gives this power to Christians and we're Christians. Then they can trust Jesus more each day. And that's what it takes. It takes a lot of trust Amen. and faith. Amen. Christians may have troubles in their lives, and some of us do. Sometimes they suffer because they are Christians. People may insult them, but God, but God wants Christians to be patient and kind. And He wants Christians to continue to trust Christ. When they have troubles in their lives, God's power will help them. Paul knew God's power because he had received it. He had received it. 
when God's people have, have his power, they will also be happy in their spirit. Christians should always be grateful to God the Father. And we should. Look what he's done for us. Look what he has sent us. Christians should, I mean, verses 9 and 11 have described how God always helps Christians each day. Verses 13 and 14 remind Christians about what God has done for them in the past. Amen. Verses 12 promises God things, good things for the future. Yeah. But nobody can receive any of these things without Christ. Amen. Amen. It is Christ who makes us holy. Then we are able to receive his gifts. This verse leads with verse 5. The Colossians had accepted the true message of the gospel. Amen. Therefore, they could receive all that God prepared for them. Yeah. In the Bible, light refers to God and to his de deeds. It also describes the time when people know and trust God. God builds in light. That is uh, too, too bright to look at. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Amen. When we trust him, we shall have his light in our lives. Amen. Amen. The opposite of light is darkness. Amen. In the Bible, darkness refers to Satan Amen. and his deeds. Yeah. It also describes the time when people do not know God. Yeah. Satan has power over people's lives until they trust Christ. <clears throat> The kingdom means where Christ rules as king. It does not refer to the physical place. People understood about a physical ruler and his kingdom. So Paul used, so Paul used this idea to explain about God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom in verse 13. When people became Christians, Satan does not rule their lives anymore. So when you become a Christian, he doesn't rule you no more. He doesn't have any say in your life anymore. Satan is not their master. He's not a master anymore. He cannot make them sin. He cannot make them do evil deeds. Instead, Christ rules in their lives. Christ is their new master. He has forgiven all their sins. Christ helps Christians to obey him. He helps them to live holy lives. Paul explained more about this in the rest of his, his, this letter in Romans chapter 6 in, in the uh, Old Testament. The Israelites were slaves in the foreign country of Egypt. We know this if you read the Bible, right? Yeah. Pharaoh, who was the ruler of Egypt, was a cruel to the Israelites. We know that too. So God brought them out of Egypt and gave them the country called Canaan. They were not slaves anymore. You can read about this in the books called Exodus, Deuteronomy, and Joshua in the Old Testament. Paul to refer to this story, though, it helps Christians to understand what Jesus has done for them. By reading that story, we know what Jesus has done for us. He has freed them from Satan's power. In verse 14, the phrase has paid for means to make a slave free. John 18 says that nobody has seen God the Father. God is the Spirit. We cannot see him because he does not have a physical body. But Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen God the Father. Yes. Amen. Jesus meant that he has the same nature and character as God. Yeah. So when we learn more about Jesus Christ, we learn more about God. Yeah. Christ exists before God created anything. Yeah. And Christ has the place of honor over all that God created. Paul emphasizes this many times in his letter. 
Christ exists before he had a physical body. God created all physical things by means of Christ. Amen. Amen. So that means he created us. Christ created us. He also created everything that is not physical. This includes the angels and spirits. In this verse, heaven means the sky rather than the place where God lives. Christians believe that God, good angels serve God, but evil angels serve Satan, who is the chief evil spirit. The false teachers worship angels. They also believe that there are many ranks of angels and spirits. Paul lists four of these ranks. Yes. This does not mean that Paul agreed with the false teachers, but Paul was emphasizing that Christ is greater than all the angels and spirits. Yes. God in Christ created them. So Christ has power over them. God created anything for Christ. Therefore, Christ is the reason why everything exists. Christ maintains the physical world. This is why it works so well. The sun, the moon, stars stay in their correct places in the sky. Every day, every day they have the same amount of hours. People in the world live because Christ keeps it alive. Christ also maintains everything that is not physical. Without Christ, everything would break down. You ever wonder what would happen if Christ hadn't died on the cross? Where would you be at today? Probably not even here, really. Christ is the ruler of everything that he created. Paul now showed that Christ created the church. The church means all the Christians in the world. Church also refers to people. The local church means all the Christians who live in a particular town or village, like Heidelberg. In the Bible, church never refers to a building where Christians have meetings. Christ does not live in this physical body on earth anymore. Christ lives in all Christians. Amen. By, he lives in all Christians by means of, of his Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now Christ lives on this earth in his church, the Christians. So he calls the church his body. To be head means that Christ is the ruler of his church. He is the ruler of us. Christ died on the cross. He did not stay dead, but he became alive again. We, we read about some people in the Bible who died. Then they became alive. They became alive, for example, in 2 Kings 4, 32-37, and John 11, 38-44. But all these people died again. Christ will never die again. Amen. We serve a living Savior. Amen. Not a dead. Amen. That's who we serve. We serve a living Savior. He became permanently alive first before any else did. He has a new body. The church began when Christ became alive again. And he has the most important rank in the church. In 1 Corinthians 15, 20 23, and 35 through 58, Paul tells us that Christians are permanently alive because of Christ. Amen. We are permanently alive. Thank you. Then each Christian will receive a new body that will never die. Amen. That will never die. That's right. We live, you know, we live, everybody lives a different life, but we all live the same life. Yeah. Yeah. We all live in Christ. Yeah. Amen. Christ is somebody that that died for us yeah. and shed his blood because, because he loved us. He knew from the day one what he was going to do. He knew this already. Yes, he did. 
And to, to mock God and to mock Jesus Christ is blasphemy. Yeah. Mock. Like the two things on the cross. One, one was telling Jesus, if, if you are the Messiah, save yourself. And by the way, why are you ready to save us too? Yeah. Yeah. But the other, the other thief said, how can you, how can you talk down to this man right. when you're dying? Yeah. You're going to die yeah. on this cross, just like the rest of us. Yeah. He said, I, he said, he told Jesus, why did he tell Jesus? That he, that he wanted to go with him to paradise. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus told him, you will be with me. Amen. 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 So we, we, when we, when we, Past this old world. This, this is just a stop place anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. that our new homes, our new homes is where Jesus said he was going when he told the disciples, right? Yeah. Yeah. He told the disciples in, in John 14 that I'm going to prepare you a place. Amen. Yeah. And when I get ready for you, I'll come yeah. and get you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. A lot of people don't understand why this person died and this person didn't. It's because Jesus didn't have his place ready. <laughs> He's got a place ready for all of us. He does. Yeah. He's got a big enough house to serve us all. Yes, he does. And when we leave this old world, uh, there'll take nothing with us now. Because yeah. I've never seen, I've never seen a uh, new all trader behind a hearse. That's right. <laughs> so we're not taking nothing with us. Right. Everything else to know that everybody don't, people don't realize that everything they own belongs to Jesus Christ. Everything them. Yeah. They go out buy a new car, they think they own that car. They don't own that car. Because if they got it, God gave it to them. Jesus gave it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Just like me, everything I own, everything I've got, I just got it on yeah. From Jesus. Yeah. Jesus didn't have it back. Every bit of it. I told my boys, I've got two boys. I told my boys, I said, I'm going to go out of this world just like I came in. Mm -hmm. Poor and in. I'm not going to have nothing. Right. And that's the way I want to go. Amen. Don't forget that. <laughs> and like I said, it's, it was, it's nice to be invited here Amen. at this church. Amen. I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't uh, preach in big churches, but I love my churches. Amen. And all of my church families. Amen. And church families and fellowship means the world. Amen. Amen. You can take all the money in the world. And give it to somebody else. Yeah. If I've got good fellowship with my churches, Amen. that's yeah. what I mean. Mean. It's all I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. I was also going to say, brother Mike, uh, I was also going to say, you know, they, a lot of people call this up here a kneeling rail. You don't have to kneel, right? That's right. But just think about it. Before you leave here tonight, something can happen right out there. Amen. And you leave this wall. And you don't want to leave it. Because when you leave, you're not going to get a second chance. There is no second chance. And when Jesus comes back, he ain't going to say, hey, you decide to go with me or really? He ain't going to ask you that either. That's right. He's not going to ask you nothing. And I've been in some hot places in my life. <laughs> some hot places. I used to build tugboats and barges, build a lot of welding. And if, if Satan's world is hotter than that, I don't know. Amen. I don't know. Thank you.
amazes me. But yet, we sit here tonight, and I pray that everyone on the of my voice knows that freedom. Yeah. Come with the love of Jesus. I think Robert's got an invitation song. You want to, somebody else, you want to crank that up? Crank it up. All right, would you stand with us now? If you have a need in your life tonight, make your way to this old altar or just bow your head right where you are. God will hear you. It doesn't make a difference where you are. Just call out to a holy God tonight. Ask Him. Let's ask Him to start that fire in us. Amen.
I get hung up on stuff like that. All right. Don, do you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask you guys just to pray, be in prayer for me, and of course then Brother Mickey for Saturday night, but uh, that we bring the word to everyone that God wants us to bring, that we're just vessels. And, and because, Amen. as you all know, you can feel people's prayers. Amen. And so that when I go up there tomorrow night, I just want to, to feel them, and I would really appreciate it. Amen. Amen. We certainly will. All right. Are y'all ready to go home? It seems like we're, we're leaving early or something. I don't know what to do. I, mean, I feel like I should go on stay here. <laughs> Brother Don Stanley, can you hear me? I know you can't see me, but can you hear me? Let me crank it up here. Would you dismiss us, sir? Say, Amen. Amen.